cervix. This is the world's nicest cervix and we're looking at it from a view which we want to look at it because we are seeing a basic transition of the non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium into the columnar epithelium. In addition, there are usually a lot of little cystic spaces in this area, as well as throughout the rest of the cervix subepithelial, which are filled with mucin as well. The uh, cervix is an extremely simple organ to understand. And if you remember that when you look at a cervix from a gynecologist's point of view, you're seeing very shiny epithelium, which this is. Uh, very soon, however, this epithelium may either abruptly or gradually or in a spotty fashion transform to a classical, simple columnar type of epithelium. It may do it directly or it may do it uh, by virtue of occasional patches of squamous metaplasia. So here is your classical columnar epithelium of the endocervix. And here is your classical uh, stratified squamous epithelium of the shiny endocervix, which is right here. Here is, a, here is some more columnar epithelium. Here are some more mucous glands under the epithelium. Here is some epithelium found in association with these inflamed uh, glands, which is called squamous metaplasia. So this may, very well may have been columnar epithelium, which transformed into squamous epithelium by virtue of the fact that it has to deal with this inflammatory process. Uh, the connective tissue is chiefly fibroblasts and some smooth muscle. And you can see that the uh, subepithelial areas under, underneath this metaplastic area are spattered with chiefly lymphocytes. But I'm sure if we could go a little bit higher up, we would also identify some macrophages and plasma cells as well. Uh, here we have a small thin vascular space, could be a lymphatic or a vein. Uh, here we have some more subepithelial connective tissue. Uh, here are, because this is inflamed, a lot of these vessels here could very well be a granulation tissue because they look like they have very, very plump endothelial cells. Here's another vein. Uh, this looks to me like a vein. This is definitely a small artery. Uh, this could be a vein. Um, this is definitely either a vein or a lymphatic. If a vessel is very thin-walled, in other words, basically one endothelial cell, and there's a lot of blood cells, and it's probably a vein. If there's no blood cells, cells it could be a vein or a lymphatic. Here is a nice, perfectly orderly array of ciliated columnar cells. Uh, non-stratified uh, of the endocervix and I think we basically covered cervix in the deeper portions of the cervix uh, which is uh, chiefly uh, smooth muscle and fibrous tissue and once you're away from this glandular area here are mucus glands, mucus glands, mucus glands, mucus glands, mucus glands, uh, epithelium, uh, non-stratified or simple columnar ciliated. Here are, is the stroma or the underlying connective tissue which you can see is going to be a lot of smooth muscle just like you have in the uterus. There will be some fibroblasts as well and lo and behold we can see a lot of good sized blood vessels here as well. There's an artery, there's an artery, there's an artery, there's an artery, there's an artery that little slit there is probably a vein, that's probably a vein, that's probably a vein, that's probably a vein. And these are probably small veins here and here. Here's an artery, artery, artery. Uh, like I said, the cervix is remarkably logical and simple and can practically be described on the basis of tissue uh, reconstruction rather than uh, thinking it has special features. Uh, spindly fibroblasts and uh, smooth muscle fibers here, mucous glands here. 
the uh, endocervix has the columnar epithelium. Invariably, there's always a good amount of inflammation, chiefly lymphocytes. Uh, and the mucosa, or the epithelium of the cervix, as you can see, is not only simple columnar, but I think I could convince you very easily it's probably ciliated as well. Here's some blood vessels, here's some inflammatory cells, chiefly chronic lymphocytic infiltrates. And notice that some of these inflammatory cells, we're not teaching pathology here, we're teaching histology, but some of these uh, inflammatory cells actually penetrate through the uh, epithelial layers. And uh, that's all I really want to say about cervix, and therefore, I thank you very much.